look guys i thought i might just hop on here because i wanted to cook a vegetarian version of mi goreng mi goreng actually in malay just literally means fried noodles but it's not just any kind of fried noodles you ask any malaysian about mi goreng and they will have a very specific idea of what it is and what it should be like so mi goreng typically is sold by what we call the mamaks which are these indian muslim hawkers in malaysia and having said that though there are still a number of different versions of mi goreng that float around in the space of malaysian street food malaysian hawker food so what i'm going to do here today is actually a simplified vegetarian version of mi goreng the reason why it's simplified is because look really it's a little bit of a pantry clearer for me i'm just kind of like pulling out some items that I have in my fridge and just using what I have on hand in my pantry, right? And I want to make this really easy for you to be able to attempt at home as well. And the other thing is obviously it doesn't have to be vegetarian. It's just, I kind of like, like I said, there are lots and lots of different versions of mi goreng in Malaysia. And the version I actually grew up in, because I used to work at my dad's uh, store in Seremban, Nalu hometown. And across the road from our store, there was a Indian mama selling mi goreng and his mi goreng was actually vegetarian so I've never forgotten that and it's very different to some of the other mi goreng I've actually eaten and even different to the version that I used to sell when I had my restaurant so we're going to attempt I guess kind of like a little bit of um, uh, something similar to what he used to make and uh, but let's kind of like get started so what are kind of ingredients do I have I've got these noodles right these are egg noodles or wheat noodles but you notice these here are quite thin these are like um, Look, in my part of Malaysia, <clears throat> we grew up eating mi goreng that used what we know in Australia as Hokkien mi, Hokkien noodles. So you go to your local supermarket and look for Hokkien noodles, you'll be right with that. But these are actually thinner. But funnily enough, when I traveled to Penang, which is up north, I, I grew up down south. When I traveled to Penang up north, I noticed they use thinner egg noodles for their mi goreng as well so this works perfectly we're going to use that and as far as the kind of vegetables that are going in i've got some tomatoes that we're going to use i've got some garlic which we're going to use and i've got some uh, these are what we call choy sum in chinese so we're just going to cut them into two inch lengths and these like uh, the other thing i want to mention is sometimes the stems of these vegetables can be a little bit fibrous if, especially if they're getting a little bit you know on with age so what you would want to do is actually just kind of like get a knife through them and just peel off the skin a little bit okay that just makes it like easier to eat so like you don't get like bits of fibrous vegetables stuck between your teeth okay so this is what actually i have a good memory of doing helping my stepmom in the kitchen as a kid in malaysia so we just peel off some of the fibers and it's a little bit optional depending on the kind of vegetables you use and depend it depends on the batch and the age of the vegetables as well but it's a nice to do thing okay now the other thing you want is some um, ketchup okay uh, i know it might weird out some people to think oh you're putting tomato sauce in your asian food it can't be authentic you'd be surprised how much uh, we use tomato sauce in some of our dishes in malaysia we don't go overboard with it but it does actually appear in a number of our recipes okay so we're going to use ketchup and like i said we're keeping it simple we're not trying to go a little bit too crazy in terms of the kind of ingredients you want i've got some potatoes so now these potatoes i actually pre-fried them but you can poach them uh you can air fry them or whatever whatever works roast them uh, as long as it's cooked through so you cut them into chunks and then you cook up the potatoes so these yeah and you want some tofu okay these are not actually the type of tofu you typically find in nigor and usually you use the firmer tofu but again like i said it's a, we're doing a little bit of a pantry clearing exercise today in this session nothing too exotic too hard to get just pretty straightforward simple ingredients that anyone should be able to find at their local supermarket okay well a couple of uh, cloves of garlic we're going to mince these okay and we've got an egg over here i've got some slices of chilies and this is uh these are curry leaves okay now if you don't have it don't worry about it it does add a really nice it, it does add a nice flavor to your mi goreng okay this actually is, uh, it grows really easily here in sydney so this is actually from my garden from my balcony herb garden thing okay so again like i said if you don't have it don't worry about it now because we're keeping this vegetarian the other thing i'm using 
is a vegetarian oyster sauce and that sounds really weird if you're Malaysian you think what what on earth is me going um, doing with oyster sauce as a Chinese ingredient don't diss it till you try it okay um, obviously if you're not keeping this vegetarian then you can use a regular oyster sauce or you can leave it out altogether so instead of oyster sauce you can use um, kicap manis which is sweet soya sauce or you can use uh, this here. Now, the reason why I, I didn't mention this straight up is because I think a lot of people have trouble getting a hold of this, okay? This is what we grew up knowing as thick soya sauce or dark soya sauce in Malaysia. But nowadays, it's branded and marketed as cooking caramel. So this is a very Chinese ingredient, okay? It does appear in a lot of mee goreng recipes and it appears in my restaurant mee goreng recipe. But if you can get a hold of it, add it. If you can't, leave it out, no drama, okay? So we've got some uh, lemon juice. We've got a little bit of lemon juice, throw that in. And you know what, because we're following the version, like I said, I grew up loving, um, I'm going to throw in a little bit of turmeric powder in it, okay? Now again, leave it out if you don't have it. I just thought, just be a little bit uh, different and add some turmeric powder in it. So again, we've got the egg and we've got the curry leaves. I've got some slices of chili over here that we're going to throw in afterwards. We've got the noodles and soya sauce, pepper. And chili, uh, chili paste, chili sauce, or chili flakes, whatever. Okay, I've got some chili sauce in my fridge. This is just basically blended fresh chilies with garlic. It, you don't have to go that far with it. It's just this. I, I eat this as a condiment to uh, with my, you know, with my regular dishes. And I thought I'm just gonna throw that in. If you don't have that, just crushed chili flakes will be fine. Okay, so sometimes I use that as well. Alright, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to, we've got this wok here, we're just going to heat it up. So in, ter in terms of chili, like I said, typically when I had my restaurant, I would actually make my own chili paste for this. And that's just from dried chilies that's been uh, boiled in hot water, boiled in hot water, that's been boiled and then strained out and then blended into a paste. And that gives you like a pure... Uh, kind of like chili paste to go into this all right but like I said we're doing everything shortcut we're clearing out our pantry clearing out our fridge so I'm throwing in some of my own chili condiments in there uh, if you don't like chili leave it out okay so let's get started and obviously we want some oil here we go so now this pan here now um, when I had my restaurant obviously I would cook my mee goreng on a high pressure stove high pressure gas stove using a thin wok right we're not doing that today we're just cooking it on a hot plate and we're just using this um this thick base heavy base wok and the other thing you want as well because these noodles you can see it these noodles are fairly firm and al dente it takes a lot for them to soak up the flavors okay so the one thing that i notice a lot of people when they cook anything that's stir fried using hokkien noodles or this kind of noodles I can tell visually from the photos they post on Facebook that uh, they haven't soaked up the flavors enough. They still look almost, you know what I mean? They still look like they've had sauce thrown over them. That's not what you want. What we, The trick to do this dish is to uh, for it to soak up the flavors of the sauce. And to do that, we're going to help it along by adding some water as we cook, okay? I know it seems a little bit counterintuitive and I've had people complain before, oh, that's not how they do it in Malaysia. But trust me, like I said, then this it till you try it. Okay, so this wok is just heating up a little bit. Let's just throw in some oil. Okay. And we're gonna add the garlic. First off. And with the Tomatoes, you want to just half them or quarter them depending on how big they are. These are fairly small tomatoes, so I'm going to half some of them and just quarter the larger ones. Okay, now let's throw in. Now, if you've got some protein, if you're not keeping this vegetarian, you can throw in the protein before you throw in the noodles, okay? But because this is vegetarian, we're just throwing it all in. And the tofu, like I said, usually typically you use firmer tofu. These tofus have been fried up, deep fried, but again, you know, you don't have to. It's just from a visual aesthetic point of view, the tofu is meant to look brown. It's not meant to look white, okay, for me going. 
Okay, so one thing I noticed a lot of people make a mistake of doing is that they don't get the wok or their pan hot enough. Okay, you hear the sizzle? That's what you want. You want the sizzling to be happening here. Now, uh, when I collaborated with a hotel chain in Penang, right? Penang is the, 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 the world's capital of street food. The chef actually put in the egg now, okay? And Again, when I posted the video on Facebook, people were complaining, oh, you shouldn't put the egg in so early. I personally do not put the egg in so early, but it just goes to show, his mee goreng tastes fantastic, by the way, just goes to show there's really sometimes not a strict um, order of things to go into your dish. Okay, we're going to throw in some of the turmeric. Like I said, this is my own little take on it. Um, it's a little bit atypical, um, but it's just uh, a memory of the version of mee goreng I grew up eating in Malaysia, okay? So this just makes it a bit yellow. I'm going to throw in the chili, the chili paste, chili sauce, chili paste, whatever you got. Now we're going to add a little bit more oil. Okay, don't be afraid. And let's throw in the tomatoes. And throw in the tofu and the potatoes. And throwing the vegetable stems first, ideally, because they're a little bit tougher than the leaves. And let's add some water now, okay? It's starting to stick a little bit. And also, you guys can notice, because I added a whole bunch of ingredients, it brings down the temperature of the pan, that's why it starts to stick, okay? At which point you can crank up the heat. I'll just let it settle down a little bit. Add a little bit more water. And let's start adding the seasoning in, okay? Let's throw in some uh, soya sauce. Some ketchup. I've got a big giant tub of ketchup here. Okay. Might have added a little bit more than I wanted, but doesn't matter. You're going to find, again, different versions of uh, mee goreng will have like different levels of tomato vibe to it. Okay. Some of them look like they're just sitting in like tomato sauce and others like where it feels like there's no tomato sauce in it at all. Okay. Let's put in the oyster sauce. Okay. And let's throw in the rest of the grains. And if you've got the cooking caramel, aka thick soy sauce, aka dark soy sauce, or if you've got like the uh, ketchup manis in lieu of the oyster sauce, add that, okay? And depending on how piquant your ketchup is, you can add a squeeze of tomato juice, okay? Tomato juice. You can add a squeeze of lemon juice, okay? Now we're going to add a little bit more oil, let's just shove these to the side a little bit, add some oil. Bring it back up to temperature, because you notice as I stir it around, it will have, uh, the temperature will have dropped. We're going to throw in the curry leaves, okay, pull the, pull the leaves off the stem. Now that the oil is heated up, let's crack the egg in. Okay, now don't mix it in too quickly, okay? Just move the noodles back over it. Let it sit, let it cook, let it cook. You stir it too much, too quickly before it cooks, you're not going to be able to see the egg in the noodles, okay? You want to be able to see the eggs. Okay, let's turn off the heat. And add some pepper if you want. You can leave it out if you don't have it. Let's 
adjust the flavor some mee goreng can actually taste noticeably sweet okay so you can do that too if you like that little bit of a sweet note to your fried noodles so you can sprinkle a little bit of sugar through it you can use fish sauce in lieu of soy sauce too sometimes i do that as well okay okay but to me this tastes perfect let's dish, dish this off but yeah curry leaves if you can get a hold of it that's probably the one ingredient that might be a little bit counter to um you know your average supermarket a supermarket shopping list but if you can get it brilliant it'll really lift the game with this particular version of vegetarian mee goreng voila there you go um so let's really quickly uh you have whipped this up really quickly uh give it a shot let me know how it turns out love to know okay uh thanks again guys for sticking around like i said i just wanted to hop on quickly and show you how to make a quick and simple mee goreng at home just using fairly easy to acquire ingredients okay and i will see you next time Ciao!